Okay. Uh, so good afternoon. I'm uh, Fu Chao from China Mobile. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, like I said, this presentation is uh, actually originally done by my colleague Wei Chang Chen. I think he's uh, quite famous here. But this time, due to visa problem, he, he cannot join us uh, this time. So he asked me to help him to, to present the, the, the whole presentation. So I, I will try my best. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, you probably should send email to me and probably to Wei Xiang. And I myself, uh, I'm working uh, in this, uh, uh, focusing on mostly NFE. And I'm working on the open NFE communities for like uh, several years and also familiar with the OpenStack community. So if you have a question related to this, I'm happy to answer. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So uh, this uh, presentation is about the transport network uh, for 5G, our innovation and plan, <clears throat> especially about the SPN network that we, we would like to promote here. So first, we would like to give uh, some details of the uh, transport network uh, in, five, in 4G. Uh, you can see that there are some uh, details uh, in, the, in this page that uh, for the PTN backhaul, we have more than 2 million PTN nodes. And the layer three is in the core layer. Uh, for GPON backhaul, it is integrated Pico and Fermato cell. And from how is mainly based on fiber direct uh, connections. So when it comes to 5G, there are actually uh, new services actually bring us uh, new uh, challenges and requirements. First, uh, the, the network architecture is actually changing. Let me see. Okay. Sorry, I have to make it synchronized. <laughs> First is that the net network uh, arch architecture is changing. Uh, for example, the CU and DU decoupling, and also the sync of the, the, the 5G core into edge, which makes the, the connection between the network's elements, device, devices are uh, changing to the actual interconnections between clouds. And secondly, is the, the, the service requirement is actually changes for in bandwidth, delay, slicing, and synchronization. This also brings uh, specific uh, changes uh, for uh, the, the transport network. And thirdly, it's about the infrastructure. The fiber, the machine room, they are all changed for the 5G network. So taking all these things, uh, uh, the infrastructure, architecture, bandwidth, uh, delay, synchronization, and other, all these requirements of 5G actually change greatly. So probably we need to re-architecture the whole transport network. So there are a few things we actually need to take in mind when we uh, really want to design this uh, new 5G transport network. Uh, first is the, we, we probably should follow the trend of IP-based network and make full use of the advantage of Ethernet ecosystem chain to reduce the cost in the optical and the, the electrical layers. And secondly, uh, for large bandwidth and flexible forwarding demand, multi-layer resource collaboration is required, like uh, layer zero to layer three uh, capabilities should be integrated at the same time. And thirdly, for ultra low latency and vertical industry, soft and hard so uh, isolation chips are needed to support TDM and packet switching. So uh, bearing all these things in mind, uh, we bring the, the slicing packet network to meet the 5G transport new requirements. Uh, it is uh, SPN is a new transport technology profile, which include new protocols, new opt opticals, and the new control. I could probably bring more details of these three news in the following slices. So <laughs> first, uh, begin with architecture. The SPN actually integrates uh, layer zero to layer three multi-layer functions. It's a new generation transport network designed for 5G, and it's a, uh, it's a, a photoelectric fusion device. It can realize intelligent slice scheduling by SDN. And to, for layer two to layer three, the packet layer guarantees the, the flexible uh, connection ability of the network and the flexible support of MPLS, TP, SR, and other packet forwarding uh, mechanisms. And for layer one, the channel layer actually realizes the lightweight TDM uh, crossover uh, to support the 66-bit uh, based uh, fixed length block TDM switching and provide packet network hard slicing. Uh, for layer zero, the transport layer realizes Ethernet of optical inter interface and uh, the D DWDM uh, network. 
And uh, here gives uh, more uh, details of the SPM um, protocol stack architecture. You can see that it innovatively introduced SPM channel layer, integrates TDM and pocket switching, and integrates layer zero to layer three into a whole. <coughs> Okay, so we, we, we get more details first into the transport layer uh, for the, uh, the Ethernet optical layer interface requirements. Uh, we actually try to list some of these uh, from front hall requirements, uh, middle hall, back hall. For the front hall, the fiber direct drive, uh, latch core fiber, 25 gigabit module is uh, required. And we also uh, distinguish the requirement for the middle hall and the back hall for small cities and large cities. So uh, based on these, we go to the transport layer for SPN. As a 5G mobile oriented integrated transport network for metro applications, uh, actually reasonable requirements actually for the uh, optical comp components. Uh, we list it here as uh, four, uh, 5G gigabytes pump gray optical, single fiber bi-directional coherent colored optical, and uh, silicon photo photonics. So uh, SP actually pro provide broad market potential for the new generation optical industries in the coming years. This is uh, how we look on the, the, the SDN, uh, SPN uh, optical uh, layer. And then talking about FlexC and DWDM, it actually enable flexible expansion and segmentation of bandwidth. Sorry for that. Uh, here's the, the details for these two. For Flexi, it actually supports the bandwidth that exceed the physical interface rate through uh, multiple interface bounding. And uh, plus DWDM, it not only provides single fiber larger uh, bandwidth capability, but also combines DWDM channels to flexible increase bandwidth on demand. And uh, Flexi -E also supports uh, sub-interface uh, channelization with uh, an and uh, minus uh, <laughs> and times uh, 5G bandwidth to achieve network slicing. Okay. So uh, going to the pass layer, um, we'll give more uh, details of the slicing channel layer in this uh, uh, list page. For the SCL, it actually provides low latency, hard isolation uh, slicing channel based on layer one uh, of multi-service. So uh, it is actually categorized, uh, categorized into SC, which is, is the SPN channel, the EXC, Ethernet cross connection, and the SCO, which is the, the, the overhead of the SPN channel. Next page, uh, we talk about the cross, uh, cross connection and OEM, which uh, we, we use new switch and new OEM uh, for the SPN network. So uh, again, for the SR, uh, S, uh, 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 SR MTL uh, solution, the SRT actually provides the simple end-to-end -end layer three VPN solution without complicated uh, protocols such as RSVP and uh, LDP. SRBE provides the, the, the simple solution for flexible connections. And the current SR solution need carrier grade service guarantee with end-to-end -end OAM. We actually introduced the, the path segment and binding uh, label to build segment routing transport um, profile. Uh, more details for this, I guess, in the next page. Yeah, the SRTP. On the basis of SRT, we actually add a layer of uh, pass uh, SID to guarantee the path of SR uh, that can be monitored. Uh, and then going to the time synchronized, we actually have an enhanced uh, synchronized requirement when we move into 5G. Uh, we listed some of the requirements uh, here. Uh, first of all, front hall, middle hall, and uh, back hall. We should support the time synchronization uh, of about uh, 20 nanoseconds without handover. Uh, the multi-layer interface need to be supported and BIDI module should be used in front hall and access layer of back hall. And compared with 4G, innovative time source and time transmission technologies are required to improve time synchronization positions. Uh, and uh, for the control plane, uh, the SBN uh, control plane solution, we, we actually use this page to explain. 
we have a centralized controller. Uh, the functional requirements actually the SP enhanced the service uh, dynamic capa cap capability, and we used an SDN centralized control in control plane to 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 finish and uh, to achieve these uh, requirements. The whole basic design idea is like to to integrate the management and the control, and we use centralized control suppl supplement uh, by the uh, distributed control. So uh, with uh, the combination of all these uh, different protocols, SPN actually realizes the real-time closed-loop control of the service passes. Let's see. And for the slicing control, uh, we have a centralized controller to achieve the network slicing. Uh, with the, the management and the control plane integrated, which we just uh, see in the previous page, the SPA in implement lo logical abstraction of physical resources and achieve uh, one physical network and multiple network uh, architecture. And uh, going down to the consideration on the SPN equipments, uh, packet switching and slicing uh, Ethernet cross network should be support and in uh, match uh, integrated. And our ADM uh, to achieve wavelength switch uh, safety optical module is recommended to use a low level crossover to support static configuration only. And uh, building block design is uh, the, the electrical layer and the optical layer of the equipment can be a flexible combination according to the application scenarios. Uh, we have actually conducted some uh, lab testing uh, in, in China Mobile, and now it, uh, it shows that the test result is uh, quite good. We, we actually have some test result here. And uh, also at the standardization area, we have uh, ITUT uh, SG15 lead the standardization of uh, FPN and uh, work together with other SDOs to set up the, the overall SPN standards. Uh, it actually has created a new work item for ST SPN to define the path layer and the section layer of SPN and is planned to set up a series of standards to define this uh, SPN whole structure further. And some uh, activities for the SPN industry. Uh, we actually have uh, lots of, uh, uh, we actually list, list some of the activities and the progress we actually made for the SPA industry. And also we have full chains of industry partners to join this whole activities, including equipments, uh, chips, and uh, the test in, in, in uh, equipment. Mm. Okay, so uh, major takeaways uh, for this whole, whole presentation. Uh, first, the 5G transport network is uh, actually facing requirements on re-architecture. Uh, the unified transport uh, solution for front hall, middle hall, and back hall makes the network maintenance easier and more efficient. So we propose the SPN. The key technologies for this uh, new uh, 5G transport network is uh, we have a new architecture which uh, we use SRTP over slicing packet over DWDM. We have this uh, new link layer, which is end-to-end -end slicing, link aggregation, and channelization. And we have a new packet layer using SRTP, carrier grid layer three, and SDN control. Uh, we have conducted lab testing and field trials. Lab test results show that the SPN can meet the, the stringent uh, FG, uh, FG uh, requirements. Uh, and SBN field trial is actually running in China Mobile uh, now, and we will share more uh, of the results after the field trial finish. Okay, so uh, that's it. Thank you.